Here in North America, we're told time and time again that we have some of the cleanest, most accessible, beautiful water in human history. This has been the case for decades, and yet companies like Brita have convinced more than three quarters of the population that we need to buy additional filtering for our water. So is there actually some legitimacy to this, or is it all just marketing? Now, if you're wondering if this is a repeat of a subject that we've already done, we did in fact make this video over on another channel that we launched a while back called Future Proof Health. That channel is no longer operational and the full dramatic story of that can be found on a podcast episode that we have broken down over on our Patreon page. The Patreon page is where you can get access to full-length podcast episodes discussing relevant subject matter relating to the things that we talk about on this channel, and it's a way to support us and what we do here. So, consider that. Now let's get back into Brita. Now right off the bat, I think we need to address how sensitive of a subject this can be. Water and access to water is a basic human right, and yet there is a disturbing number of people around the world who do not have access to it. In this video, we're gonna be talking about US water specifically, because that is where the majority of our audience is, and also, there's just a lot of places in the world and we don't have time to cover them all. Now, filtering water for safety or flavor reasons is not a new idea. It is likely that we started learning to filter far earlier than this, but we have records dating back to 4,000 years ago detailing water purification techniques. Many old school methods are still in use today and would involve things like boiling, filtering through sand or gravel, or using some kind of additive to kill bacteria. Now, back in the day, they did things a little differently. Greeks and Romans would mix alcohol into their drinking water to make it a little bit safer, which is more fun than the modern day chlorine. And we also used to drink a lot more alcohol in general because it was considered safer than water at the time. Two shots of vodka. And one of my favorite ramifications of this is in Portland, Oregon, where they actually put in free public water fountains in order to get people to drink more so they would sober up. They're really cute too. They call them bubblers and they're just kind of all over the place and they just bubble all the time, which is great. It's like the only positive backside of like a history of alcoholism. Now it seems that humans have long had some sort of inkling that clean water was important, but it wasn't until the 19th century that a British epidemiologist, John Snow, linked contaminated water to a cholera outbreak. And yes, that Jon Snow is the Jon Snow that inspired the character in Game of Thrones. Crazy, did not know that, and it's definitely true. Winter is coming. Today, it just seems obvious that, you know, water can spread disease, but this was a pretty major breakthrough in the world of medicine. Since then, municipalities around the world have started taking filtration a lot more seriously, saving countless lives in the process. Today, it is just the norm that if you live in a wealthier place, you are going to have clean, reliable tap water in your house. And yet, despite this plentitude of disease-free drinking water at our disposal, domestic water filters are at an all-time high and continue to spread to the point where a solid majority of Americans currently use these devices. Brita is now just a household name, but does it deserve to be? Now, funny enough, uh, Brita actually got its start in what is listed as one of the countries with the cleanest tap water in the world, Germany. Brita was actually the name of the founder's daughter, which is not particularly relevant, but it is super freaking cute. Brita started off as a very simple family business, making filters in their backyard to demineralize water for car batteries, apparently. But then in the 1970s, the family introduced the world to a brand new concept, the water filtration jug. The filtration system, of course, looks a bit different now than in the 1970s, and today you can get a huge variety of filters from Brita and other brands, but generally speaking, these things are pretty much exactly the same. Typically, these things pass water through an activated carbon granule melange of some sort, which sponges up stuff like chlorine, mercury, and lead, leaving your water relatively heavy metal free. That's the idea. Now, by the time Brita came to the United States in 1988, there was already a market for this kind of thing, and competitors were selling similar jugs in this market. Brita had to fight for its place this side of the Pacific, and in fact, almost was forced to admit defeat. But smart marketing saved the day and here we are decades later making a YouTube video about them. 
Their success hinges on three main claims. One, tap water is poison. Two, tap water tastes gross if it isn't poison. And three, Brita is helping you save the planet. So let's break those down one at a time. So first off, let's examine the claim that tap water will murder you and your family. And we got great results, both at the box office and from streaming. Brita's entire existence kind of depends on people believing that their water is at least to some level a bit dangerous. They are very much incentivized to drill this idea into the hearts and minds of the public and together with the media, they have done a very good job of it. One recent estimate suggests that almost 60 million Americans have access to regulated tap water and don't drink it. It's like a flat water, Voss. What? You know, Voss or Fiji if you don't have Voss. Uh, yeah, you know, anything you got's good. Yeah, we have out of the faucet. Like from a hose? Tap water. What country is that from? Oh my God. And yet, if you ask the CDC, the States has one of the safest and most reliable drinking water systems in the world. Not as good as Canadian tap water, of course, but you can't have everything. If you're the country that invented Mountain Dew Code Red, it's likely your water systems aren't gonna be very good, just based on your desire to invent beverages of that color. Now, of course, this is excluding a bunch of uh, rather disastrous situations like Flint, Michigan. Similarly, in Canada, we have indigenous water crises all across the country, which has been going on for decades. And there are still 29 long-term water drinking advisories in 27 different communities in this country. Chances are though, statistically speaking, if you're watching this video, you're in our audience demographic, which means that you live somewhere in North America and your local government does something fairly similar to what we're about to describe. In the US, public water systems have been protected under the State Drinking Water Act since 1974. Basically, this act gives the authority to the EPA to set national standards to make sure that you don't get cholera or lead poisoning from your public water supply. To this end, the EPA regulates the presence and amount of over 90 different contaminants in public drinking water. To be fair, not all tap water is regulated by the EPA, as many people source their tap water from private wells. In that case, it is the owner's responsibility to ensure the water is safe by having it lab tested every now and then. However, in the case of the vast majority who have regulated water, these standards help protect us from sewer runoff, pesticides, and like uranium. To be clear, everyone seems to acknowledge that even water that passes the EPA standards has its risks, but there are two main narratives about said risks. On one hand, much of mainstream medicine insists that the danger is minimal. Contaminants will be present, sure, but they are considered mostly harmless and not super worth fretting over. This is the kind of advice that you will get from places like Healthline and the CDC. Not everybody buys into this narrative, all right? There's definitely been a few cases of doctors who adopt a more holistic approach that have warned about tap water. We'll have five of those, please. No, sorry. Can we have four of those and a tap water, please? What? The argument here is, sure, the EPA regulates 90 contaminants, but there are literally hundreds of unregulated contaminants that most people don't want to be drinking either. It's not really contested that tap water can contain things like car emissions, you know, flame retardants and other people's pharmaceuticals, stuff that might just get into the waterways that isn't on this list. In the vast majority of cases, these things are not going to kill you instantly or anything, but water pollutants have been linked to health problems, including cancer and autoimmune diseases and stuff like that. It can be very risky, especially for people who have pre-existing health concerns. Even things like fluoride and chlorine, which have been added to many water supplies specifically for health reasons, come with documented risks. This is understandably a, a part of the story where people can get triggered, right? There's a lot of people who are justifiably concerned or skeptical about the chemicals in our water. And then there's headlines like this that make those concerns seem pretty valid. Our water systems are built and monitored by humans and humans make bad choices and mistakes. Um, and they also make Mountain Dew Code Red which was probably also a mistake. Now, we are not going to get into the fluoride chlorine debate here. It is way too complicated 
to justify spending, uh, you know, half of an 11 minute video just on that one subject because we're talking about Brita filters, okay? We have a bunch of sources down in the description if you want to check out where we got this information at any time on any of our videos. But back to Brita, regardless of those other things, I just don't think that Brita is the answer to those concerns. Let me show you my thinking here. Either Healthline and the CDC are right, and all of these things that are in our water are in relatively manageable amounts and we're going to be fine. Or our tap water is slowly killing us, and in that case, we probably need something a bit more substantial than a glorified water pitcher to deal with it. In the first scenario, Brita is redundant at best and damaging at worst. These kinds of filters are designed to sponge up contaminants, not kill bacteria. Some studies indicate that this can actually lead to more bacteria in your drinking water because the filter just kind of collects all of them in this little bacteria breeding ground in your pitcher. Now I'm guessing that it's not that harmful because most people who own Brita filters probably don't replace the filters when they're supposed to. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but that's my guess. A little friendly reminder here, Brita's with dirty filters don't clean your water like at all. It's just a placebo effect at that point if it even makes the water taste better. But even if you use a Brita properly, I hate to say it, but it's not the best filter out there. Their standard filters don't even deal with lead, which is one of the main things that people are worried about. And only their faucet version addresses select pesticides and pharmaceuticals. In general, their filters are only designed to reduce pollutants, not eliminate them entirely, which might not be aggressive enough for some of you. Brita is one of those products that we tend to just buy on a whim because we're familiar with it and it sounds like a nice thing that maybe will make us healthier. But if we're seriously concerned about ingesting toxins from our water, it might behoove us to spend a bit more time to intentionally choose something that solves our specific needs. Now you can actually test your own water to help figure out what you need to do or what you don't need. It's as simple as going down to your local hardware store and picking up a test kit. And in some cases, you might be able to get one of them for free from your local government. But it's a small print kind of detail that Brita might not want to emphasize. They like to talk about all the crazy gunk that might be in your water, but the reality is you don't know what is in your personal water supply until you test for it. In fact, your water might have totally different issues than the water your next door neighbor has because your house has different piping. Once you know what you're dealing with, you can choose a filter that addresses your needs. Or maybe, I don't know, you learn that your water is completely fine and you don't need anything. But Brita doesn't want you to know that. There are so many of these filters out there nowadays, each one with its own raging debate on its efficacy, and we just don't have the time to delve into it all. But a few things are here for you to look out for. Ideally, you wanna pick something out that's NSF certified to filter what it says it'll filter. NSF is a product testing organization that verifies what these companies say about their products is true. Keep in mind that certified to NSF standards does not mean the same thing as NSF certified. It just means that the company is trying to emulate NSF standards by doing their own testing, which doesn't really mean the same thing. We would also probably recommend steering away from water pitchers in general. Not only do they not work as well as some more robust filtering systems, but they're kind of precipitated on the idea that they're also helping save the planet by reducing the number of plastic bottles, right? But the thing is, in most cases, Brita water filters are not replacing bottled water they're replacing tap water. On top of this, pitcher filters usually need to be replaced more frequently and use more plastic than other filter types. And often, these filters aren't recyclable. In Brita's case, you can mail off your filter to be recycled, but in all likelihood, that's just an extra step that no one is going to do. Countertop or under the sink filtration systems may require the most upfront costs and a bit of insulation, but if you're not needing to buy filters all the time, it will save you money in the long run and save the planet from all that extra trash too. But whatever you choose, we hope that you got something out of this and that you are drinking your water responsibly. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you wanna see more. We'll see you next week for another episode. Thank you.